Hi everyone. This, la this video walks through completing lab assignment 6.4.3.3 in Packet Tracer titled Connecting a Router to a LAN. Now at this point in the semester we're going to kind of culminate a couple of things that we've learned from setting router host names and device host names, passwords for access to routers and switches, cabling the network, and now we're going to kind of move to connecting different LANs together. Now, a LAN is a local area network. So a local area network is created every time you connect anything to a router. So for instance, every port is a separate local area network that cannot talk to any other local area network without some configurations involved. So here we have this uh, port right here, connect on the router in my uh, dotted box here this is one local area network okay it everything on this network is 10.1.1.0 slash 24 now we were learning a few chapters that slash 24 actually dictates how many devices can be connected to this network which in this case can be 254 actual usable IP addresses okay down here okay same thing everything connected to this one port a uh, fast Ethernet port on this router is uh, in the 10.1.2.0 slash 24 network. Up here, same thing. Everything in this dotted box is one LAN on the 192.168.10.0 network. And down here at the bottom, all right, same thing. This is another LAN, okay? So you got four local area networks, and then you've got one wide area network, which is created when you connect two routers together, especially using a serial cable. And this one is on the network 209.165.200.224 slash 30. Now that slash 30 is actually the subnet mask. That subnet mask is 255.255.255.252, but it only allows two usable addresses. Now what happens here is there is no room for expandability anyway, so we're not going to be able to connect like a PC randomly in the middle. This is just a router to a router. Only network is going to happen and be created here. So that's okay to only have two usable addresses because I've only got router one and router two. We always want to try to conserve as much addressing space as possible. Up here, I could actually connect like, you know, 253 more PCs up here, right? Or 252 because we actually use an address here for the router uh, as well. But we'll get all into that a little bit later. Okay. Now, going down this uh, lab, it says, first, display the information on R1. So they've already got some stuff configured here. So I'm going to go to the CLI. All right, my password there is Cisco. It tells you up there the console password is Cisco. I type enable. The password here is class, C-L-A-S-S, -S, all lowercase. All right, and it says, which command displays the statistics for all the interfaces on a router? So if we do show run, okay. We see we've got a gigabit zero zero, gigabit zero one, nothing's configured. Right here, there's an interface serial zero zero zero, and the IP address is 209.165.200.225. Okay, and then that's specifically this port right here on R1 that I've got highlighted. Okay. And its subnet mask is 255.255.255.252. It also has a clock rate set. That means it's the DCE end of that cable. So, well, it won't let me show you, but the DCE end right here means it needs the clock rate between these two. And it's set to 64,000. Okay. Usually that is set in increments of like 32,000. So 64,000, 96,000, 128,000, so on and so on. Uh, so you do need to set a clock rate for this to actually work and an IP address here. And of course, type in no shut to make sure the interface is on. Now with this network, the only two addresses here that are usable are dot .225 and dot .226. So on R2, if I did a show run, I should expect the same exact thing over here on serial 000, which is this interface right here, this interface right, this interface right here, okay, it you see is 226. Those are only two addresses that you could possibly assign and we'll get to that and figure that out in a later chapter about why, but right now you just need to know how to actually identify it, okay. So we see that for both of them. 
Um, it says to display the list of interfaces on R1 and R2. We've done that. We've seen how many Ethernet interfaces they have. None of them have been configured. Um, now we're going to um, display the routing table on R1. That lets you know how you can get to certain things. So on R1, if we do a show IP route, this actually lets us know every network we have connectivity to. Now, by default, what happens is you have you have automatic connectivity to be able to communicate with anything you're directly connected to. So R1 and R2 are directly connected to each other and in the same subnet. So as long as it's addressed uh, correctly, you can connect to each other. Now, you cannot connect more than one hop away. So for instance, right here, we have uh, this network 10.1.2.0. It cannot connect to this top network without some special configurations going on. So again, if we don't have the configurations going correctly, it will not work. It will not connect to each other. So we're going to explore that in future chapters as well. Okay. Now here it says, enter the following commands to address and activate the gigabit 00, zero interface on R1. So on R1, we're going to enter configuration mode and uh, we're going to go to interface G00. You can actually abbreviate that. You don't have to type out gigabit ethernet unless you just really want to. Okay. And then we do IP add 192.168.10.1255.255.255.0. And what happens is this actually configures, let's see which one, this is G00. It actually configures this port here okay now this is a very important port to everything that we connect no matter how many devices you connect up here because that is called the default gateway so 10.1 that g00 is the default gateway if pc1 wants to communicate with pc4 over here if you notice it's got to go through this router and the router is responsible for routing it to separate networks that it does not know about now if it was another pc connected behind over here in this bubble that i've created this box it wouldn't need to involve the router. However, if it leaves this uh, network to another one, the router needs to be involved. That's what, how we know where other things are. So here we type in an address of 10.1. It should fall in this range. PC1 should also fall in this range. Um, and then we do no shut to turn that port on. And you'll see it say change state to up. Now again, this default gateway also needs to be configured on PC1. So here, you should notice that this default gateway address should match whatever your uh, default gateway port is for your router. So here, PC1, the default gateway for it is G00 on router 1. So it needs to pass through here. So it needs to know how to get to it. So 192.168.10.1 should match what we actually configured for G00 on R1. Now, the IP address of this specific device cannot overlap. You can never have overlapping devices, uh, IP addresses there. The only thing that should overlap is the default gateway. Okay, so that turns that on. It says R1 uh, should now be able to ping uh, PC1. So you should get connectivity from here to here. So if we go to R1 and exit out a couple times, okay, we can actually do ping 192.168.10.10, which is the PC's IP address. You hit enter. All right, success rate 80%. Now, if you hit up and try it again, it should be 100%. Sometimes it just fails a couple times before it gets on track. Now, if you get zero out of zero every time for a couple times, then you did something wrong. But we should be able to ping back and forth because, again, we configured that default gateway. All right, so now that we have uh, G00 configured, we're going to configure the uh, rest of the gigabit ethernet interfaces on R1 and R2. And we're going to use the addressing table up here at the top to do that. So on R1, we have another one to configure. So I'm going to go back to configuration mode. And this time we are configuring the interface right here on R1 that connects to this LAN at the bottom. So we're going to go to interface G01 and IP add 192.168.11.1, 255.255.255.0, and no shut. 
and it should start to come on. Now again, that 11.1 should be the default gateway for PC2, and it is. And you see it has a different IP address for its identification of that specific PC, which is 11.10. Okay. Now at this point, we would want to save our configurations with copy, run, start. And we're going to go over to R2. And we're basically going to do the same thing with configuring both G00 and G01 from the table. Now uh, we go to interface G00, IP add 10.1.1.1, 255.255.255.0. No shut, and again, I'm just getting this information from the addressing table. G01, IP add 192, or sorry, 10.1.2.1, 255.255.255.0. Oh, and no shut. Okay, and that turns both of those on. So again, this top one here, its IP address is going to be 10.1.1.1. It should be the default gateway that's listed for PC3 and you see that it is. Down here, all right, this one in this box, G01 should be 10.1.2.1 and it should be the default gateway set for PC4. Okay, So it has to be set and has to match up for it to leave the actual network. And of course we want to do copy run start to save our configurations on R2. All right. Now, um, they also have you uh, set a description, okay, for each one. That's not great in this lab, but it is definitely a good idea if you do description LAN connection to S1, just so you can know which port is which when you look back at show run. So if I go here. And do interface G00 and do description um, LAN connection to S1, which is that switch up there. Okay, and I can do G01 description LAN connection to S2. Okay, so when I do a show run, you can actually see it'll tell you where it is without you having to go research on the router, hey, which one of these ports is which. It'll actually go ahead and tell you so that you can have some idea of direction. Okay, so that's a good good thing always. All right, so it says test end-to-end -end -end connectivity. Now, they've already configured some other stuff on this router, like the serial interfaces and everything, but everything should be able to ping everything else. So you could use the envelope button over here, and we should be able to ping from PC1 to PC2. You might need to click this arrow to pop it out there. It'll say failed initially, but if you re-double click this red button, if you do that a couple times, you should see successful. If you do it more than three, four, five times and it still failed, then you may have configured something incorrectly. So same thing over here. We want to make sure we get successful back and forth. Okay. All right and also across the network as well, even from PC1 to PC4. Okay, So all different directions, we should have full connectivity. Now, just because these lights are blinking does not mean you have end-to-end -end connectivity. That just means your ports are on. It doesn't mean you configured them correctly. So make sure you always double check your pings to make sure you have end-to-end -end connectivity. If you have any questions about this lab, please make sure to let me know.